All right, in a previous video, I compared this one. This is the uh, Kicker L7. This is uh, the current version that they're still using. Not the Q series. The Q series has a little bit thicker, um, what is it called? It has a little bit bigger gap dimensions. I think they actually get it made by a different factory because there's a couple other changes that are um, uh, just different. It's not really that big of a change. So anyways, this is the Kicker L7 uh, 15 inch motor. This one is dual four. So, but to use in this uh, example, I'm gonna show you using this coil, which is actually the wrong coil for it, but it's fine. So when David, David Moore over at PSI, also known as fixmyspeaker.com, link for it in the description, but he is so busy, he shuts down his whole fucking website. He's like, fuck you, I'm not even gonna give you parts, which is totally pimp, believe me, it's totally pimp. I really love David's work. I just can't afford it. So <laughs> if you can afford it, good. Does it mean it's the best? That's debatable. So, but again, I do things the way that I want them to be. He does things the way that he wants them to be. So I, I, I've known him for many, many years and uh, we haven't talked much on the phone, mostly it's text, but he's a good guy. I like him and uh, I recommend his work if you can afford it. If you can't, come see me. <laughs> I'm the affordable alternative. So, but uh, as far as centering the coil goes, basically the idea is to, there, there are several, several choices, design choices or say engineering choices that you can make depending on coil length. I don't want to get into that in this video. This is the standard coil that, that fits this standard gap dimension and gap size. And it's, and it's very popular out of China. Uh, this is the standard two and five eighths uh, coil. Um, I, like I've explained to you in other videos, this is actually the dual four motor. Oh, get out of here, Skeeto. This is the dual four motor. Uh, so it has a little bit tighter gap. Uh, this is the dual two coil. So, and it's a little bit bigger. That's all, because it uses slightly larger diameter wire. It uses the same number of windings, uh, the same number of, uh, it just uses a little bit bigger diameter uh, wire. In fact, a quick test to, to show you the difference between the two, if they're not, um, if they're not, uh, if they're side by side, you just tug on the wire a little bit and the, the D2 coil will be a little bit stiffer. That's all because it's thicker wire. The, uh, the, four, the dual four version will be a little bit finer. That's all, if you can tell that. So, but what you wanna do is basically find the center on here. And in this case, I think it's already, I think I already know it's 40 millimeter. Uh, that actually looks like 50 millimeter, maybe in between. But what you wanna do is find the center. And then now you wanna calculate how thick this top plate is. And when you look at the work that David has done, and I use his diagram as well, because there's typically two types of top plates, which is a, a, a regular, like this is this part right here, is the thickness all the way across it, towards the gap. And then there's another type, which is this type, which has a little bump. Now, why they put that bump on there, I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. But you also have to calculate that. So really the best way to calculate, if you don't know it already, to calculate the, the size of the top plate is actually use a prison ruler like I do, and then you can squish it in there. The reason why they call it a prison ruler is because so you don't stab anybody with it, and you can fit it off in, inside of a gap. So I'm guessing by looking at it, it's going to be about uh, 20 millimeter. So this is probably 15, uh, and then this is 5. So it's going to be about 20 millimeter. So what you want to do, it's not really math. Uh, cause you don't, I don't like doing it on paper. What I like doing is just taking the size, right? So now looking at, uh, let's see, we'll get the ruler. So now what you want to do is, let's see, let's look at this. This is, no, it's about 40 millimeter. So, you know, the center is 20. And so what you do is you take half the thickness. So if half the, if the thickness is 20 millimeter, you take half that. Okay. Which is 10. Half of 20 is 10. So then what you want to do is go 10 millimeters north of center. Okay, so your center is 20 and go 10 millimeters north. So right there at 10 millimeters. And then what you can do is mark it with a little silver Sharpie. Okay, which I'll, I'll have a link to in the description. And some people are like, silver Sharpie, I've never heard of a silver Sharpie. Oh my God. Yeah, exactly. So then you mark it. And then what happens is when you have it, when you find, figure out the shim, right? So to hold it in place, then you come down about there. And you see the mark and you want to make the mark level with the top of the top plate, right? And that centers it, okay? And then you use the shims to center it concentrically, right? Here's your butthole, you wanna get right in the center, 
You don't want to be good left, right, or anything like that. You want to be centered. Okay? So that way it floats in there. And it's suspended by the uh, spider. And then the upper uh, annulus, as they say, is the, or the, uh, the uh, upper fulcrum point is the surround, which is this. See? So there you go. And so, and that's why sometimes when people are like, they go, hey, I got this, this sub or this amp or whatever. And I go, okay, send me a side picture of how you have it configured. Okay. So this, you can put this bolt pattern on several different frames. So I don't know if you're using in this with a spacer, without a spacer. Um, and there's several different spacers. Some are just for go fast. Some just look, you know, whatever a certain way. Some of them actually add ventilation like the sundown one which I don't like because it's made out of plastic. That's why I use the bearing spacers uh, to do the ones I do. So, cause they're steel and they're strong and uh, I think they look cool. So, and then if you really want to go tits McGee, you can spray paint them if you want some sort of color and then put them on. So there you go. Uh, all my secrets revealed. So, but typically for venting, you only want to go about 10 millimeter anyway. You can go taller if you want. It doesn't make a difference. The only problem that you're going to run into, where's that fucking coil? That's not it. Oh, well, oh, it's behind it. Um, the only problem you're going to run into is that you then need a taller former. See, but me in my, in my forethought, I, or, when I was buying from PE, I would order all my formers as tall as I can get them. Cause it doesn't really cost that much more. It's like 10 cents more, 15 cents more. Like I, I don't give a shit because what it does is it gives me the flexibility later on. I can, I can put spacers in between and I can do whatever the fuck I want. And then you just cut down the excess. See, smart, smart. Always think ahead. Always think about the next person that's got to service the fucking thing. Uh, I'll get into that on, a, on good habits for being a, a EM tech, electromechanical technician. So, which is technically what this is because this is electrical mechanical. So technically I'm, technically I'm an EM tech. There you go. So hope that understands. So actually let's do a review because some of you get confused and don't understand that you can watch this video again. Okay. You can rewind it, start from the beginning and watch it again. Okay. So the idea here is to find the center of the coil, right? Which we figured out this whole thing is 40 millimeter. So half of 40 is 20. So it's going to be right there. You can mark it if you want. You don't need to mark it, but you can. And then what you want to do is find the center of the top plate. In this case, the set, the top plates gap where it meets the pole piece is a total of 20 millimeters. Okay. If it's 15, then you got to do half of 15. If it's 20, you got to do half of 20. So you want to find half of this amount. And then you want to go north of center. Okay, so you're finding the center of here to center on here. See, but this one's a trick because it's got a little platform up here to make the, the gap, the actual gap, thicker. Sometimes this is, uh, manufacturers will use this to save money. And then sometimes they'll even make this a separate piece of steel. It depends on how they're manufacturing it. So. Um, sometimes it's milled, sometimes it's uh, pressed into place. So de again, depending on the factory and whatever else they have going on. So, uh, you know, again, like uh, the thing I was talking about earlier about this being this motor being basically the same as the CVR motor from 2005. Why did Kicker not vent the pole? Well, it's probably because of cosmetics because they like that badge and you can't really do a vented pole with that badge. That's probably why they did it. Now, does a vented pole give better power handling? Yes, but you gotta understand that power handling is mostly about abuse and about um, handling abuse from clients, right? End users, because end users, typically all end users, probably 90, 95% of them are abusive, and but they don't know it. Like most people that abuse other people in their lives, they don't understand or know because they're, they, they only think of themselves. You got to think of other people and how you affect them, right? How you interact with them. And it's important to have consent and th those sorts of things. So, and I, I only say that as, as for you to think about other things. So you think about your woofer. Here you are asking way too much of your fucking woofer, right? When it doesn't get any louder and you already got it up to 11 and you're like, well, let's see if it goes to 20. And then your woofers go up and smoke and you go, Oh, Pat built this woofer. He's a fucking dick, man. He built junk woofers. No, I don't. I build as good or better than anybody else. You, there, there's, there's, you can't build it better, okay? I'll get into that later, but you can't build it better. Uh, but for the most part, I build them as good or better than everybody else. Uh, I just give a better warranty uh, because war all warranties are bullshit. 
uh, because they, the things they cover are only defects. They don't cover abuse. And 99% of the woofers that die, I say die in quotes because you killed them. If a woofer ever burns, it's because you burned it. If the tinsels burn, you burn the tinsels. Be responsible for your abuse, okay? Otherwise, we, we're going to have awkward conversations. And I'm going to have to walk you from the fucking property. Fucking perp walk. Walk of shame, motherfucker. So, but anyways, so center the coil, center on the gap or the top plate. The, typically, the top plate is what makes the gap. The gap is that space right there, that little gap where it slides into. That's the gap, okay? And if you watch my video on gap dimensions, you want to measure the pole's OD, which is outer diameter. The OD is the same as the gap ID, okay? And then you want to measure the washer. This is called a washer in China. Here we call it a top plate, whatever. The ID, the inner diameter of the top plate is going to be the same number as the OD of the gap, okay? So the numbers that I'm looking for are the ID and the OD of the gap. Sometimes I can do the quick math because there's not really any math where I say, what's the OD of the pole? And they go, whatever, 63 millimeter. And I go, okay, what's the ID of the, the top plate? And they go, 65 millimeter. Okay. All right, that tells me what I can work with. Don't tell me the fucking thickness of the coil. Don't tell me that. that, that that's going to show up anyway. And it's not important. Uh, don't, uh, what was it? What was the other one? People always give me. Uh, they start giving me the total length of the, of the gap, how it goes. I don't need to know that either. I just need to know the thickness of the top plate and then what your frame you're using. So then I can, I can use, I can model it here when I'm building you a recon kit with the same frame, right? So I, I know my spacing. In fact, you don't have to measure all that because I have a model here in the library that I can measure against. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's my video. Hopefully I explained it. Hopefully you're not super retarded. And if you are super retarded, that's okay. You can change that. Okay. Read some Jordan Peterson books and realize that you don't have to be retarded forever. Okay. I love you guys. Have a good day. I got to go to the scrapyard. Bye.